A blessed day everyone! We are the group 3 and we will discuss the nervous system. So before we start, let me introduce myself. I am Rhea and Velasco, one of the members of this group. Let us know first what is nervous system. The aim of nervous system is to maintaining coordination among all the systems of the body and also with the environment synergistically with endocrine system so as to keep in homeostasis. Coordination is the process through which two or more organs interact and complement the function of another. Our nervous system is our body's command center. Nagmumula sa ating utak. Yan ang nagko-control ng ating paggalaw, ng ating pag-iisip, ng ating automatic responses sa mundo na nakapaligid sa atin. And it also controls other body systems and processes such as digestion, breathing, and etc. So this is our learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, I am able to define nervous system identify the function of central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, and synapses. Identify the main parts of human brain and their functions. Discuss how neurons, dendrites, and axons function within the nervous system. And lastly, describe how the nervous system coordinates and regulates feedback mechanism to maintain homeostasis. Now, let's talk about the nervous system. It gathers information from both inside and outside the body. Sensory function transmits information to the processing areas of the brain and spine. Processes the information in the brain and spine integration function. Sends information to the muscles, glands, and organs so they can respond appropriately motor function. The nerves interpret the information and control your response. It's almost like an enormous information highway running throughout your body. The messages help you move your limbs and feel sensation such as pain. Your eyes, ears, tongue, nose, and uh, nerves all over your body take in information about your environment. Then the nerves carry that data to and from your brain. It controls and coordinates all essential functions of the body, including all other body systems, allowing the body to maintain homeostasis or its delicate balance. And next, the nervous system is divided into two main divisions, the central system or the CNS and the peripheral nervous system or the PNS. Let us know first what is the meaning of the central nervous system or the CNS. It is your brain and spinal cord make up your CNS. Your brain uses your nerves to send messages to the rest of your body. Each nerve has protective outer layer called myelin. Myelin insulates the nerve and helps the message get through. While the peripheral nervous system, your peripheral nervous system consists of many nerves that branch out from your CNS all over your body. This system relays information from your brain and spinal cord to your organs, arms, legs, fingers, and toes. Your peripheral nervous system contains your somatic nervous system, which guide your voluntary movements, and the autonomic nervous system, which controls the activities you do without thinking about them. And under the autonomic nervous system is the sympathetic nervous system, which controls organs in times of stress and the parasympathetic nervous system which controls organs when body is at rest. And now let's move forward to the basic cell of nervous system and Sir Sindong is here to explain it. 
Good day everyone, I'm Carl Ernest Isindong from BZ1D and today I'm going to discuss to you the basic cell of the nervous system, which is the neuron. Neuron is the basic functional cell of the nervous system. It is the building block, the basic building block of our nervous system. It specializes on transmitting impulses. It transmits impulses up to 250 mph. So, what are the parts of a neuron? First is the dendrite. Dendrite receives stimulus and carries its impulses toward the cell body. Cell body with nucleus is made of nucleus and most of cytoplasm. Axon. Axon is a fiber which carries impulses away from the cell body. Schwann cells are cells which produce myelin or fat layer in the peripheral nervous system. Myelin sheet is a dense lipid layer which insulates the axon and make the axon look gray. Node of Ranvier is a gap or nodes in the myelin sheet. And impulses travel from the dendrite to cell body to axon. So what you can see is the neuron. And there are three types of neurons. First is the sensory neurons which brings messages to the CNS or the central nervous system. Next is the motor neurons. Motor neurons carry messages from the central nervous system. And lastly is the interneurons, which is between sensory and motor neurons in the central nervous system. Impulses. A stimulus is a change in the environment with sufficient strength to initiate a response. Excitability is the ability of a neuron to respond to the stimulus and convert it into a nerve impulse. All of nothing rule. The stimulus is either strong enough to start an impulse or nothing happens. Impulses are always the same strength along a given neuron and they are self-propagation once it start it continues to the end of the neuron in only one direction from the dendrite to cell body to axon the nerve impulses causes a movement of ions across the cell synapse synapse is a small gap or space between the axon of of one neur neuron and the dendrite of another. The neurons do not actually tough at the synapse. It is a junction between neurons which use uses neurotransmitters to start the impulse in the second neuron or an effector to the muscle or gland. The synapse ensures one-way transmission of impulses. Neurotransmitters Neurotransmitters are chemicals in the junction which allow impulses to be started the second neuron. What you see is the figure of the reflex arc. Reflex arc Components of a reflex arc First, receptor Receptor reacts to a stimulus Afferent pathway or sensory neuron conducts impulses to the central nervous system. Interneuron is consist of one or more synapses in the central nervous system. Most are in the spine. Afferent pathway, motor neuron, conducts impulses from central nervous system to effector. Effector is a muscle fibers as in the hamstring muscle, or glands response by contracting or secreting a product. Spinal reflexes, initiated and completed at the spinal cord level, occurs without the involvement of higher brain centers. And for our next reporter, we have Mr. Justin June Tibay. Central nervous system. Haven't you guys excited when you heard or when you hear CNS or the central nervous system? 
So here we are going to talk about the the brain. So the brain. The brain gets the messages from outside of our body. It tells us what to taste, see, hear, feel, smell, like the five senses. So the brain is responsible for you know the five senses that we are experiencing and also the left side of the brain for problem solving math and writing and the right side of the brain for creativity arts and music so the weight of the brain is uh one and a half kilo and so the brain controls your ability to think talk see hear remember things walk and much more it even controls your breathing the brain is a soft mass of supportive tissues and nerves connected to the spinal cord. Some of the nerves in the brain go right to the eyes, ears, and other parts of the head. So the brain is controlled the center of our self, or it is the control center, serves as a control center of our entire body. We have the brain stem. So in brain stem, we have three parts. We have medulla, pons, and the midbrain. So the medulla is, is located here. So medulla is a long stem-like structure which makes up the lower part of the brain stem. It plays an essential role in passing messages between your spinal cord and brain and controlling autonomic activities such as heartbeat and respiration. So it's controlled for respiratory system or sipagnya. Pons, it is located here. So the pons is a portion of the brain stem located between your spinal or located, it is located above the medulla and below the midbrain. So it is a bridge between various parts of the nervous system including the cere cerebellum and the cerebrum, which are both parts of the brain. So, yeah. The pawn service serves as an especially critical role in generating um, the respiratory rhythm of breathing. So active functioning of the pawns may also be a fundamental uh, to rapid eye movement so the midbrain is located here. So the midbrain is the forwardmost um, portions of the brain stem in. It is associated with vision, uh, learning, motor control, sleep, and wakefulness. So let's talk about that, the rebellion. So the cerebellum is the major structures of the brain that is located near the brain stem. This part of the brain is responsible for coordinating voluntary movements. It is also responsible for a number of functions, including motor skills such as a balance, coordinations, and postures. So, when your when you don't have or if your cerebellum has a problem, you may um, encounter unbalance and coordinate. You know your posture is not that good and precise. So it, this is where the cerebellum located in our brain. So let's talk about the cerebrum. So the cerebrum is composed of the right and left hemispheres, which are joined by the corpus callosum. Functions of the cerebrum include initiations of movement, coordinations of movement, temperature, touch, vision, hearing, judgment, reasoning, problem solving, and our emotions and learning. It is responsible for our learning. Yes, because you know, when we are learning, we have to have the reasoning skill, the problem solving skill, you know, vision, hearing, judgment, you know, we all need that when we are learning. So this is the cerebellum and it also called the front of the brain. So spine. So, again, the cerebellum is responsible for moving. The cerebrum is responsible for conscious activity. The spine 
the brain and the spinal cord are your body's central nervous system. The brain and spinal cord are your body's central nervous system. The brain is command center for your body and the spinal cord is the pathway for messages sent by the brain to the body and from the body to the brain. So it means that your brain has the cords, which is the spinal cord. And also, you know, spinal cord is responsible for um, connecting all of the parts of our body to move or, you know, for the brain to function well. So the spinal cord is that. So meninges. So meninges are the three coverings around the brain and spine and help cushion, protect, and nourish the brain and spinal cord. Model. So the dura, which is here, is the most outer layer and very top. So arachnoid matter is the is in the middle layer and adheres to the dura matter and has a web-like attachment to the innermost layers. Or mm -hmm. So it is this, the arachnoid. So the pia matter is a very thin, transparent, but tough, and covers the entire brain, following it into all its crevices and spinal cord. The cerebral spinal fluid flows through um, subarachnoid space between the arachnoid matter and the pia matter. So the meninges helps to anchor the brain from moving around within the skull. So the CSF or the cent or the cerebral spinal fluid also circulate nutrients and chemicals filtered from the blood and removes waste products from the brain. Regions of the brain where the cerebral hemisphere thalamus, hypothalamus, pituitary, pons, medulla, spinal cords, cerebellum, and the midbrain. So cerebellum, coordinations of movement and aspects of motor learning. So it means that it is responsible for moving, cerebrum, conscious activity, including perceptions, emotions, thoughts, planning thalamus, brain switchboard filters, and then relays information through various brain regions. So it is responsible for conscious activity. Medulla, the vital reflex, this is heartbeat and respiration, brainstem, medulla, and the midbrain involuntary responses and relay information from spine to upper brain. Hypothalamus involves inner regulating activities, internal organs, monitoring information from the autonomic nervous system, controlling the pituitary gland and its hormones and regulating sleep. And so they are working together to deliver into to deliver like all the necessary things that we need even though we are sleeping or eating or doing something. So cerebrum is the largest portions of the brain encompasses or encompassing about two thirds of the brain mass. It consists of two hemispheres divided by a tissue or corpus callosum. It includes the cerebral cortex, the, medulla, the medullary body and the basal ganglia. Cerebral cortex. It is the layer of the brain often referred to as gray matter because it is as cell bodies and synapses, but no myelin. The cortex, thin layers of tissues, cortex. It is gray because nurses this area lack of the insulation or white fatty myelin shield or sheath that makes most other parts of the brain appear to be white. The cortex covers the outer post or the outer portion which is 1.5 millimeter to 5 millimeters of the cerebrum and cerebellum. The cortex consists of folded bulge or bulges called gyri that create deep furrows of tissues called sulci. The folds in the brain add to its surface area which increases the amount of gray matter and the quantity of information can be perceived. Are processed rather. There's the cerebral cortex. Medullary body. It is the white matter of cerebrum and consists of myelinated axons. Hemispheral fibers conduct impulses between the hemispheres and form corpus callosum. So, hemispheral fibers, they 
play an important role in cognition, motor functions, and perception. So next is the projection fibers conduct impulse in, in and out of the cerebral hemisphere. So the projection fibers is responsible for tracks to help to relay motor and sensory signals in the central and the peripheral, peripheral nervous system. Basal ganglia. So masses of gray matter in each hemisphere which are involved in control are voluntarily muscle movements. So for those of you who doesn't know motor control, motor control is the regulations of movements in organism that possesses a nervous system to control movement or muscle movement. The basal ganglia is just located here. You can see. So lobes of the cerebrum, we have the um, frontal motor area involved in the movement in, in planning and coordinating behavior, which is located here. We have the parotid or the parotid. Sensory processing, attentions, and language, which is located here or in English here. Temporal, auditory, perception, speech, and complex visual perceptions, which is located here, responsible for talking, whether we are speaking, you know, having a speech. We are having a speech and also in auditory, because auditory and um, mouth, or the ears and mouth are connected. And also, we have the occipital. It, it is the visual center, plays a role in processing visual information which is located here from the eyesight, vision. Our special regions. So we have the bronchus area located in the frontal lobe, important in productions of speech. We have the renex area, comprehensions of language and the products of meaning, meaningful speech. And the limbic system, a group of the brain structures that helps regulate the expressions of emotions and emotional memory that we need. If we don't have emotion, it's like okay, you know, we're like crazy. We don't have emotion. And how can we emote? This is the image. So also interpreting, you know, we have the interpreting. For the interpretations. We also have the brain waves. The brain waves are the rhythmic uh, fluctuations of electric potential between parts of the brain as seen on an electroencephalogram or encephalogram or, or EEG. To measure the brain waves, electrodes, electrodes are placed onto the scalp using the EEG. There are four types of the brain waves. Or the four types are beta, alpha, theta, and delta. So the beta is responsible for awake, normal, alert, or the consciousness. So the alpha is relaxed, calm, meditation, creative visualization. Yes. Theta is the deep relaxations and meditation responsible for problem solving. The delta is the deep dream rest, is the brain waves when we are sleeping. So yeah. That's all for the central nervous system. Moving on to the peripheral nervous system. Hey everyone, I am Joyce Marie H. Villanueva from BSED 1D and today I'm going to discuss the peripheral nervous system. So what is peripheral nervous system? It is a division of the nervous system containing all the nerves outside the central nervous system. It acts as a messenger that allows the brain and spinal cord to, rece to receive and send information from other areas of our body that react to the stimuli in our environment. There are two parts of peripheral nervous system. The first one is what we call somatic nervous system. The somatic nervous system is derived from
from the Greek word soma means body. It is responsible for carrying the sensory and motor information from the central nervous system. Sometimes it is based on working from our body. For example, dancing, singing, and lifting. It is based on the command. There are two major types of somatic nervous system and it is called the motor neurons and sensory neurons. So, let us know first the motor neurons. It carries the information from the brain and spinal cord to muscle fiber throughout the body while the sensory neurons carries the information from the nerves to central nervous system. Now, let's proceed to the second part of peripheral nervous system and it is called autonomic nervous system. The two has a difference, huge difference, because autonomic nervous system is known as involuntary system while the somatic nervous system is also known as voluntary system. The autonomic nervous system is responsible for regulating body function such as blood flow, heartbeat, digestion, and breathing. In other words, it can it control aspects of the body that are usually not voluntary control. Autonomic nervous system have a two branches. The first one is the parasympathetic system. It helps to maintain a normal body function and conserve physical resources. Sometimes it is called rest and digest, feed and breathe activities because it occur when our body is at rest. The second branches of autonomic nervous system is what we call sympathetic system. It prepares the body to expand energy to respond environmental traits. That's it. I hope you learned something about my topic. That's all for today. Thank you and God bless. Good day everyone. My name is Kyle Torres from BSED1D and I'm here to share some trivias and fun facts about the nervous system. Trivia! Did you know that the nervous system is the body's inner communication system? It's made up of the body's many nerve cells. The nerve cell take in information through the body's senses which are touch, taste, smell, sight, and sound. The brain interprets these sensory cues to understand what's going on in and outside the body. This also allows a person to use their body to interact with their surrounding environment and control their body. Nervous system is very complex. We rely on it every day to help us stay healthy and safe. That's why we should appreciate our nervous system. After some trivia about the nervous system, let's proceed to the fun facts about the nervous system. Fun fact number one, the body has billions of nerve cells. Every person's body contains billions of nerve cells, which is called neurons. There are about 100 billion in the brain and 13.5 million in the spinal cord. The body's neurons take up and send out electric and chemical signals to the other neurons. Fun fact number two, neurons are made out of three parts. Neurons receive signals in a short antenna-like part called the dendrite and send out signals to the other neurons with a long cable-like part called the axon. An axon can be up to a meter long. In some neurons, axons are covered with a thin layer of fat called the myelin, which acts as an insulator. It helps transmit nerve signals or impulses down a long axon. The main part of a neuron is called the cell body. It contains all of the important parts of the cell that allow it to function properly. Fun fact number three. Neurons may look different from one another. 
Neurons come in a variety of shapes and sizes depending on where they are located and what they are programmed to do in the body. Sensory neurons have dendrites on both ends and are connected by a long axon that has a cell body in the middle, while the motor neurons have a cell body on one end and dendrites on the other end with a long axon in the middle. Fun fact number four. Neurons are programmed to do different things. There are four types of neurons. These are sensory, motor, receptor, interneurons. Sensory neurons deliver electrical signals from the outer parts of the body, the glands, muscles, and skins into the CNS, while the motor neurons carry signals from the CNS to the outside parts of the body. On the other hand, receptor neurons sense the environment, which are the light, sound, touch and chemicals around you and cover it into electrochemical energy that is sent by sensory neurons. And lastly, interneurons send messages from one neuron to another. Fun fact number five, there are two parts of the nervous system. The human nervous system is divided into two parts. They are distinguished by their location in the body and it includes the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The CNS or the central nervous system is located in the skull and vertebral canal of the spine. It includes all the nerves in the brain and spinal cord, while all the remaining nerves in other parts of the body are all part of the PNS or the peripheral nervous system. Fun fact number six, there are two types of nervous system, voluntary or somatic nervous system which controls things that a person is aware of and control consciously such as moving their head, arms, legs, or other body parts. On the other hand, the body's involuntary or vegetative or automatic nervous system controls processes in the body that the person doesn't consciously control. It's always active and regulates a person's heart rate, breathing, and metabolism among the other critical body processes. Fun fact number seven. The involuntary system is broken down into three parts. The central nervous system and peripheral nervous system both include voluntary and involuntary parts. These parts are linked in the central nervous system but not in the peripheral nervous system where they are usually occur in different parts of the body. The involuntary parts of the peripheral nervous system includes the sympathetic, parasympathetic, and enteric nervous system. Fun fact number 8. The body has a nervous system for preparing the body for action. The sympathetic nervous system tells the body to get ready for physical and mental activity. It causes the heart to beat harder and faster and opens the airways for easy breathing. It also temporarily stops the digestion so the body can focus on the fast action. Fun fact number 9. There is a nervous system for controlling the body at rest. The parasympathetic nervous system controls the bodily functions when a person is at rest. Some of its activities include stimulating digestion, activating metabolism, and helping the body to relax. Fun fact number 10. There is a nervous system for controlling the bowel. The body has its own nervous system that just controls the bowel, and it is called enteric nervous system that automatically regulates bowel movements as a part of the digestion. Fun fact number 11. Your nervous system can be hacked. Scientists are now developing ways to hack into the immune system, gaining the ability to control the brain cells with the flash of a light. The cells can be programmed to react to light through genetic altering. Hacking can help scientists learn about the functions of different groups of neurons. They can activate several brain cells at the same time and observe their effects on the body.